Have you developed or are in the process of creating an API server that will be used on a production or cloud environment? If yes, have you yet tested the availability of that API server for incoming requests when it's taking heavy strain? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to perform these kind of tests so that you can understand how many requests per second your API server can handle when performing heavy duty tasks. This is a very important measure, especially for production environments, because the last thing that you want is to have incoming requests queued because your API server is running at maximum and is not freeing up resources soon enough. Now, while I'll be using Node.js for these demonstrations, the theory and principles in this video can be applied to any platform environment. So let's get started. So welcome, I'm John Jardine, and this is Bleeding Code, your one-stop shop for all things Moonstack related. That's Node, React, Mongo, integration, and supporting technologies. I'm on a big drive now for Node.js performance optimizations. This video is the fourth installment of that series. And if this kind of content excites you, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and on the bell icon, as I will be releasing content almost every week. So the benchmark testing tool I'll be using for the test today is called AutoCannon. It's got written completely in Node, but if you use other tools like K6, Artillery, or Apache Benchmark, no fear, you can go with them. It's much of a muchness. All we care about is that you're able to load test HTTP requests and that you can identify the average request per second. That's all we want out of today's uh, videos and tests. If you don't use a benchmarking tool and you're happy to go with AutoCannon, I will be providing links at the end of this video and it's very easy to install because it's written completely in Node. So it's a simple NPM install globally, AutoCannon, and you're pretty much ready to go. Their documentation will give you everything that you need. So here I have a basic Node application and while it might look a little bit complicated, it's just because I use the same source code for a number of other videos. All that we are using for today's demonstration is package starts JSON and whatever's in the 04 API server availability folder, which right now is just a .env file that sets the env to production and port to 6000, and then the main JS file. Inside here, we are using an uh, HTTP Express server, and we are also importing the bcrypt.js uh, node module that we will be using for the stress uh, endpoint. Right, so I've got two routes over here. The one is a pulse route and the other one is stress. The pulse route just simply sends back a, an empty string. And this represents a very, very quick API with no business logic and that we will use to test availability of this application. The other endpoint is forward slash stress where we go and salt and hash a password which will simulate a heavy duty sort of transactions that are occurring on the event loop and will block the event loop for the most part. These two routes will be perfect for allowing us to test availability of our application. So to get this going, let's first go and run our API server. And there we go, it's listening on port 6000. And I also have a terminal window with two tabs open. The first one is for our stress test and the second one will be for our pulse test. So before we do the actual availability test, we're going to run two. Uh, we're going to we're going to run two checks first. We're going to go and see what is the baseline request per second for our stress test, and the same for our pulse check. So this is the bare metal baseline test. If this doesn't make sense to you or uh, minimum production requirement, this gets discussed in another video, and I will provide links to this video at the end of this video. So uh, at the end of this one, so don't worry. So you can see over here, I'm just using AutoCannon and I'm using all the basic settings. And so I merely provide the command AutoCannon with the endpoint URL. And what this means is I'll be running 10 concurrent users for a period of 10 seconds. That's the default for AutoCannon, but you can obviously configure it otherwise. This will run for 10 seconds. Right, so I skipped ahead uh, 10 seconds and we can now see that our stress test uh, when running it for 10 concurrent users, we got an average of 46 requests per second. So that's for our bcrypt.js salt and generate password. Okay, so 46 per second. That is not a lot. And we'll see this if we go to the pulse test and we do the same for a very, very basic API. We can see for the pulse test that we average about 14,800 requests per second. I mean, that's, that's a significant difference to this 46. So this 
you can see that this is performing a lot of heavy duty transactions on the event loop. And don't get confused, uh, don't confuse bcrypt.js with bcrypt. bcrypt is written in C++ and the reason I'm not using it is because it would get offloaded to the libuv's thread pool and would run outside of the event loop. So it wouldn't really fulfill our purpose in order in terms of blocking the event loop. So that's why I use bcrypt.js because it's written completely in Node.js and runs on the event loop, which means there's a lot of synchronous code that would keep the event loop busy. So now that we've got uh, the baselines for stress and for pulse, so there's 46.1 and there's uh, 14.829, we can now go and perform the actual availability test. So to do that, we are gonna take the stress test and we are gonna run it for a duration of 60 seconds. So this will now run for a period of 60 seconds. And while this is running, I'm going to go now and run the uh, pulse check for the same 10 seconds that we had before. All right, so welcome back. We can now see we dropped all the way from 14,800 to 91. Let's go ahead and run it again. All right, so now we drop down to 79. We can see that our stress test is still running and it's almost complete. It's almost 60 seconds. But that is sufficient for us to understand what the availability is for, of our API server for something as simple as just returning an empty string back to uh, the, 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 the whatever called our endpoint. Now you might be telling yourself, okay, but this doesn't really make sense because I wouldn't be running uh, a salt and hash password continuously and I most definitely won't need an API that just does nothing and returns an empty string back. But this template will allow you to go now and tweak the Pulse API to be something very basic that you would call on your server, uh, a very basic API that would be consumed on your server. And you can replace the bcrypt.js with something that could be a little bit more heavy duty, something that maybe connects to databases, needs to perform some analysis on the returned results, needs to do a couple of loops. And understand what, when is your no API server at that level where it's actually performing at a, uh, and, and performing heavy duty tasks and sort of running at a peak. And it's that time that you want to go and understand, okay, during that, how available is that server? Am I freeing up the event loop or am I blocking? And am, am I running too, too much, um, excuse my language, am I running too, too many synchronous uh, pieces of logic that will block new incoming requests? Many people just like to go and see how many requests per second their certain API can and or the API server can handle for a particular API when it's running idle, but it doesn't make sense. We need to understand what are our API servers doing when they're actually very busy and how available they are. Now the good news is much can be done to improve whatever results you may have received, uh, gotten back from your availability test. It's usually a very dire result in the beginning because Many times in the real world, we don't have possibly the knowledge, the know-how, the experience, or even maybe the budget or time to go and do things the right way or implement sort of those highly performant practices. But the good news is that's one of the very reasons I have this series uh, out, the Node.js performance optimizations, and why I'm creating these videos is we go and do, as Agility, we go and do the work in the real world, we go and test it in production environments, and we come back with what we feel are game-changing, uh, quick wins that you can adopt slowly but surely in your projects. And while we have many, many videos still to come as part of the series, there are already a good couple of ones that can help you make quite a big difference. When I performed these tests uh, for a certain project that I was working on, I was also receiving uh, a pulse result of about 100, API, uh, 100 requests uh, per second. But after a couple of tweaks, working with the event loop, changing the asynchronous functions, and even introducing a little bit of multi-threading, I managed to up that value to over 4,000 requests per second by just applying some of the um, suggestions that I've provided in these videos. So again, at the end of this video, there will be a link to the playlist of Node.js performance optimizations. There are four videos, including this one. I highly recommend that you go through them. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel, click on that bell icon to make sure that you receive notifications when I publish new content, which is almost every week as, it, as, I'm, as it's going right now. 
so that you can stay tuned for much more content to come where I'm going to start working with thread pools, multi-threading and a couple of other practices that are really going to take your Node.js uh, applications and turn them into powerful performance solutions. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumb, uh, give it a thumbs up by clicking on the like button. And until next time, cheers.